everybody, it's Tim from Phantom History House. I'm here with Steve. We are riding along. We are on our way to go look for some more cool stuff for the house, of course. Something we do sometimes on a weekend. It's a Sunday morning, and last night, Steve, you had a ghost hunt. Where were you? I did. I went to the SS uh, American Victory Merchant Marine Ship that's docked in Tampa on Channel Side. So it was a merchant marine ship that served during World War II all the way through the Vietnam War. So what kind of ghost and ghost hunting investigation, what would you call it? What was it? It's a paranormal investigation. Okay, so like, what does that mean? What happened there? I'm not really even sure what you were doing. You just kept me, you look, you had a great time. You sent me some videos of you running around the ship in the dark. <laughs> uh, tell me what, like, what does this mean? What happens? Well, so it's a historic uh, monument. So it's on the registry, it's a museum. Um, and it's set, uh, part of it is staged to look like it did back in the day when it was still running. So, you know, the bunks and everything are still there. You know, the cargo holds have like fake cargo in it. Uh, but what we did after our safety check in the morning, or in the morning, uh, at the beginning of the of the event, everybody kind of went their own separate ways. So we had people who had spirit boxes, which some say are used to connect to the other side and pick up voices. We had a psychic medium there. She was walking around with her dowsing rods. Um, and believe it or not, cat toys are actually a popular way to try to detect spiritual activity. So there are these little balls. Okay, wait. <laughs> Cat toys. Cat toys. Detect so, spiritual act. Color me. Hmm. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Tell me about it. Interesting. They come in a lot of colors, so that's perfect. Um, so it's a. They call them cat balls, and it's not what you think they are. But it's a. It's a. You did not just say that. It's Can't a toy going. Um, that lights up whenever a cat swats it. So it has to have some kind of physical contact to it to activate. So they will actually set these up in some different spaces in the in the ship. And every once in a while they'd go off on their own. Nobody was around them. Um, they have rim pods, which do the similar kind of thing. Uh, they pick up uh, on different, if you approach, it picks up on your energy and will light up. So some of those were in rooms by themselves that went off on their own. Uh, and a lot of people were taking photos and caught some strange shadows in, the, in some of the rooms we were in. So that was fascinating. So strange shadows, like how, shadows that look like a person are they shaped like people like what does that mean yeah the most popular one that i saw that three people got on their on their phones um and one of the cargo holds uh looks like somebody leaning against the wall uh, in the shadow behind some of us some of the group who was sitting around talking um and what was interesting is the shadow was not in the same position every time so it wasn't a beam it wasn't a prop you know something had like changed positions and uh some people said that it looked like it was a sailor. Um, others said that I'm not sure if it's a sailor, but I can see whatever it is has an arm. Um, so it was kind of interesting to see how people interpreted what they caught. Uh, but it was definitely something that, that looked so. Like. So you, I heard that you were you were talking earlier to the person like they. Some people took the picture and didn't get anybody, and some some of image, and then some people took the. the same sort of picture but got different sort of images right so it's like that does that help validate that it's real yeah because it's not the same shadow so it's not something casting a shadow that's i specific. see what you're saying so okay. it, it moved is what the thought is kind of and there was another area which is the the reefer room is what they call it which i believe is like a used to be like a refrigerated area i had to look it up because i didn't know the term okay um and uh there was a lot of activity in there last night allegedly as well um i I didn't see or pick up anything myself, but I'm not always very open and receptive to that kind of thing. Um, but uh, a lot of people said that that room had a lot of activity, and now it's a conference room. Um, but very small, and it's like a little mess hall. Is what it is now. So there's no air conditioning, right? So it was really hot? It was very hot. During the daytime tours, they do have areas that have like cooling off stations where they have little like window units and stuff, but those weren't running last night. Um, which is on purpose because you don't want Mechanical Those stuff noises. to mess up yeah. your sensor readings or whatever. So yeah, it was, it was pretty warm. I so, came home very sweaty. Yes, yeah, so, so I can attest to that. So what did you? So that was horrible. I can't believe I just said that. So edit here. Um, so what? So what was it like walking around in the dark with a flashlight on this ship? Like that had to be. What was that experience like? Especially when you're by yourself. It was fascinating, and I will say that I was never like scared or creeped out um except for one spot that i just felt like i shouldn't go mostly for safety issues i don't think it was supposed to be accessible um 
but it was really neat and you know I'm all about the history side of things too so I just kind of imagined you know what was it like on the ship out in the middle of the ocean where everything around you is dark and uh, this is kind of your your world um, and but you know it is docked and it is, is a museum they had really cool up lighting all throughout the place so it had like this purple bluish haze everywhere um, it was just really peaceful um, and amazing and I think my favorite room was the engine room so tell me about the engine room you said it was really big it was really big um, and not big like wide but deep so they had a catwalk that went over the engines it was a, I believe it was a steamship originally um, so you could look down like two stories and see the engines and you could look up like two stories and see whatever was going on up there I don't know how it all worked um, but you were like suspended in the air walking on these catwalks looking at this big cavernous engine room uh, which was eerie and beautiful but also intricate um, and it kind of showed how these men in the merchant marines had to get down there in order to maintain the ship and how tight those spaces were. So was this like around the center of the ship? Is that where the engine room? Yeah, yeah, it was toward, towards the middle. To one in, yeah, toward the middle. Yeah, kind of in the middle and it, again it expanded from the top of the ship all the way to the bottom. So how do these kind of investigations work? Like, did they contact them and say, hey, we want to come in and use the space? Like, how does that happen? Um, it's like a rental. A lot of these historic places, the way they keep up the maintenance and the renovations of them is that they will actually um, uh, rent the space for X amount of hours. It was, what, four hours last night. Uh, so it's kind of like a fundraiser for this museum. And it gives the team um, all access to the ship. There's a couple of staff members there who are there to help out if needed. Um, and you can kind of explore the ship wherever you want, do whatever paranormal tests you want to do, whether it's if you're a psychic, whether you have the, the, the physical gadgets that they have. Uh, and then um, people got together towards the end of the night, kind of compared some notes, but the big stuff happens afterwards where everybody reviews everything that they recorded the night before to see what they caught. So that happened. that's happening like today? Or did it happen last night? That's happening today. Everybody I'm sure went home and crashed because it was very warm. There were a lot of steps. There was a lot of walking. Um, but I'm sure today and tomorrow people will be reviewing their footage to see what they caught, whether it's an electronic voice phenomena, um, an apparition, you know, whatever it might be. They'll look at all their footage and then compare notes. Yeah, so that's interesting. So like they, when they're recording it, they may not hear a voice, but when they play it back, there may be things there that they didn't hear or realize in real time, right? Correct. And the belief is, is that a spirit can communicate on a different frequency that we can't hear, but the your video recorder might. However, I did meet a psych, <laughs> psychic last night who said that she did hear a man's voice a couple times. Um, and it wasn't a member of our team. It was uh, something nobody else heard. So there are times where some people can hear things, but electronic voice phenomenon is really popular. Well, and it wouldn't be shocking to me that there might be residual energy or, or even haunted, you know, like hauntings on a warship, right? This ship also was used, the way you described it to me, tell me about it, was the, so, its main purpose? So its main purpose was deliver uh, 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 supplies to the front lines throughout whatever war it was in, whether it was the Korean War, Vietnam, World War II. However, um, I was reading on the, the website and researching this place before I went that uh, in Vietnam it was actually used to transport more than 300 GIs who had perished in Vietnam. Um, so they actually refrigerated part of the ship in order to ship those bodies back to the U.S. Now I actually asked somebody about that last night and he believes that those probably aren't affiliated with any of the hauntings because they met their tragic end elsewhere. Um, so most of the hauntings there are believed to be residual uh, from people who had worked and lived on the ship for so long. Um, or potentially someone who might have passed away on the ship. Right, absolutely, because there was a morgue, there is a, a, a sick bay, you know, so it had all those things that a ship would have. And I'm sure some tragedy befell it, but... Wow. Um, but yeah, this is only one of three victory ships that are still available to tour in the entire country. Cool. So if you're interested in maybe doing this same thing, contact us. Steve can tell you how to get in touch with the people that did this because they do these kinds of investigations of, uh, all the time, right? They, they do, yeah. Feeling Paranormal, uh, uh, Ryan and Tiffany Feelin, uh do these investigations. And you can learn more about them actually on a Phantom History podcast I did uh, about the Tatum House, uh, which is not too far from Sarasota. That's how I met them. Uh, and they do investigations like this all over the place, and they're open to the public. You, There's a fee associated which helps cover the rental of whatever they're investigating. Uh, and then once you get in there, you're able to go and explore and, and do your own searching. 
So go check out that podcast at Phantom History about the Tatum House. And then, uh, you know, if you want to find out more about this, contact us, Steve. And don't forget, we have our new Conjuring Phantom History, which is probably where this is going to be. That's the new podcast that we're doing. And if you're interested in possibly investigating the Phantom History House, we are talking to people about doing that as well. So um, let us know. Come stay, everybody. Come. We can talk ghost stories, and Steve can tell you more about all of this in person. Thanks, Steve. You're welcome. It was a blast. See you soon.